As we remember the Lord's death together this morning, uh, I want to invite you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. And if you don't have a Bible this morning, I want you to just put your hand up. There's some men coming down the aisles to distribute Bibles. If you don't have one, we would just love to have you see God's Word for your own, with your own eyes. And if you don't own one, we'd love for you to keep this Bible as a gift this morning. We'll be looking at Matthew 16 and verse 26 in preparation for taking the Lord's table this morning. Jesus said, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? There's a remarkable exchange rate on two counts on display in this little verse an exchange rate of infinite proportions. Jesus asks two questions here, and each question indicates an infinite chasm between things that could be traded or exchanged. He asks first, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Imagine for a moment actually getting the things that you long for in this world. Imagine getting all of them. You can probably imagine already that once you had them, it would not satisfy, and there would be other things that you'd want, things that other people had that you now realize you don't have because you got everything you wanted, and then you want that. Imagine that you got all that you wanted after you got what you wanted and more. Could you imagine having everything? Could you imagine having everything such that everybody else on the planet was destitute? <laughs> all resources, all enjoyments, all power, whatever it is your eye desired. And Jesus says, what would that profit you? And he asks the question in such a way that the answer should have been obvious to us. Perhaps we don't live as if that answer is obvious. But the answer is obvious in Jesus' question. What will it profit you if you gain everything? And the world would say, yeah, well, yeah, that would be profit. I will have profited everything if I got everything. And this question is posed to get us to answer nothing. I got nothing if I got everything, if it meant the forfeit of my soul. You see, your life is of infinite proportion because it endures into eternity. And if you got everything the world had to offer for 20 years, 30 years, 80 years, whatever you got it for, and forfeited the next 80 quadrillion years, which is just the start of eternity, then by any mathematical equation, any calculation, you would have gotten nothing for all of it. Do you understand the suicidal, eternally suicidal tendency to think that this world has what we most desperately need and really what we ought to want? what we will have wanted if we could look back on it from 10,000 years from now. It is an exchange rate of infinite proportions. You profit nothing if you gain the whole world and forfeit yourself. And the second question is another exchange rate. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? Imagine standing before your creator and God asking you to give account for your life. If you had lived your life apart from him and gotten everything the world had to offer, and he was asking that day for your soul, for your life forever. What would you give then in exchange? You would trade everything you had, and it would not be enough. 
oh, you might count on your religion and, and offer to God, look at all the things I did. Or you might say, look at all the things I didn't do. And it would not be enough. In fact, those would be charged against you. Perhaps try to give back all the gracious kindness, kindnesses of God that he gave in his general kindness to all of humanity. All those breaths, all those enjoyments, all those relationships, all those moments. And you couldn't give those back. Empty-handed, empty-pocketed, no merit, nothing that God could accept in exchange for your soul. What then? The answer again here is nothing could you give in exchange for your soul. Your crimes against God have been of infinite proportion. And the life to be bought back is of infinite duration, and you do not have the resources for such things. But God does. What will a man give in exchange for a man's soul? You can give nothing. And yet God himself has rendered an exchange through his own son, the man, the God-man, the Lord Jesus Christ, and God actually did give him as an exchange for the eternal life of all who would believe and place their trust in him. Every human being who would give up chasing what the world has to offer and embrace the Lord Jesus Christ finds that God has in fact given Jesus in exchange for your life. Jesus himself said, what greater love has a man that he lay down his life for his friends? And Jesus is willing to call friends all those who turn from themselves and surrender to him. This verse, Matthew 16, 26, comes in a context of Jesus laying out the cost of discipleship. If you're going to follow Jesus, take up your cross, follow me. In other words, die to self, give up on you in order to get Jesus. It sounds costly, and yet it is the greatest, most profitable exchange you could ever make. Believer, you're here this morning in Jesus Christ because he has exchanged his life for yours. He has paid the debt you owed. He has endured the wrath of God that you and I should suffer for all of eternity. And we celebrate his death in our place, we celebrate his resurrection to secure eternal life, and we celebrate this morning his coming return to set all things right. If you're a believer here this morning, you don't have to be a member of Grace Bible Church or even a regular, regular attender of Grace Bible Church. If you're with us this morning and you love the Lord Jesus Christ and have surrendered to him and have experienced this infinite exchange, then this is the moment for you to remember his death. We drink juice, symbolizing his blood. We eat bread, symbolizing his broken body. And we do these things in remembrance of him. There will be a few moments of silence. That's an opportunity for you to examine your heart, confess any known sin, to rejoice in the forgiveness that Jesus has purchased for us, and partake in communion. If you're not a believer here this morning, I just want to invite you to be a believer. Be born again. To, to count the cost of living your life for yourself and exchange that for a life in God through Christ and get everything in him. If you're not a believer, this time of communion is not for you. I would encourage you not to take the bread and not to take the juice. That is for people who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ, have received forgiveness of sin, and belong to him. The men are going to come forward at this time. When you've received the cup and the bread and examined your heart, please take those and I'll close us in prayer.